Um, just to clarify on that money situation, do you currently have the cash to pay that entry fee in early, um, early August? We've got it. Basically, since the protocol came out, we've had to scramble pretty hard. We have a uh, sponsorship and private commitment for a portion of the money that we need to survive, really. There's no point just paying the entry fee if you can't make it. So we've got a portion of the money to get us out till the end of February, which is a date when you must know the qualifier as well as the venue under the protocol. And we need the government now to um, come in as well. A combination of the two uh, would get us there. What do you make of the delay in naming the location? Is it just one of those things that happens, or do you think they're trying to oracle it deliberately to <coughs> delay it so you can't get your funding together? No, I don't think that the, the delay in the venue announcement is anything sinister. Um, I mean, obviously you'd like it a bit earlier, and in any other sport it happens quickly, but there's a process that has to go through, they have to, go through to get there, and San Francisco has been eliminated for, I think, quite legitimate reasons, frankly. I like I think San Francisco was amazing. Uh, so it's just process. I mean, the sooner the better. But we don't just need the venue, we need the qualifier as well. What have you made of these, this kind of concerted media attack coming from you, from Jimmy Spittle and Russell Cooks, who's had a lot to say on social media as well? How do you respond to that? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit surprising, I guess, that, that you know, the defender after the Best America's Cup, probably in recent memory, certainly in my, my memory, um, that that should happen. But, oh, look, it, at the moment it, it, it will damage the team if it goes much further and it will end up being you know, self-fulfilling in terms of just possibly destroying the team. So we just got to walk through it and just keep on going forward. We're trying to get forward. Yeah, because we've been told that it is actually an oracle strategy to try and get rid of you from the team and effectively destroy Team New Zealand. Well, I mean, I, it could be. I mean, it will could be, but but it's, it's not going to have that effect on this organisation. And as I say, we just, we've got a protocol. We need certain information going forward. Uh, there's been changes to the protocol. We can live with it. It's not that bad. Uh, and we've just got to get on and try and raise the money to survive. But I guess these attacks have been kind of personally around your role on the team. They've been kind of saying if you can't afford to run the team, maybe you're being paid too much. I mean, is it a case of them trying to remove their greatest opponent before the start? It's it's possible. I mean, you, you've got to sort of look why because it is it's probably unheard of in sport uh, that, that this sort of thing happens. Um, I mean, I, the only analogy I can think of is, is if if, if uh, the Aussies were to win a Bledisloe Cup match, that the captain rings up Steve Chu to tell him how to run his, you know, tell Steve Hansen what to do next week. So it's a kind of a, yeah, it is a little bit. Of, it's it's quite unusual. Can you almost take it as a bit of a compliment, the fact that they're <laughs> concentrating on you? Someone actually suggested that to me. Said, well, you got their attention. And, you know, it was an amazing America's Cup. They did well. Uh, yeah, well, obviously we got their attention. <laughs> cool. That's all I've got, mate. What's Why do you think that campaign's running? Because it hasn't been done before in the coming God, I have no idea. I, I have no idea. I really, I really don't. Um, I really don't. I mean, but this is not an organisation. You know, I don't make no apologies for protecting our our organisation, a team that's been in every final since um, '92, and the most successful America's Cup team in history. Uh, it, you know, we will protect it. I will protect it. I don't make any apology for that. I mean, if they changed the protocol so you could have two AC-62s, would you build a second one? I haven't really. I mean, that when that was said uh, last night by Oracle, that was a, a complete news to us. We'd never heard that before. And we haven't really today thought of the implications of that. It's got a budget implication for sure. Uh, it might, you might be able to rebalance that in terms of how you play your surrogates. But, uh, but uh, it's definitely got a budget implication, but we haven't really given it. I, mean, I don't know how even serious it is. Yeah. So what if you timeline that out, because Oracle had two boats, and then they've got a four-month gap in there between the end of the qualifiers and the start of the... Well, the four-month gap, de four gap depends a bit where the qualifier is. If it's in the Southern Hemisphere, which is a... Re well, it you're, well, it, well, it does and it doesn't. It has to be... You, you would say logically it would be in terms of getting two boat testing with their boats to separate them out as far as they can. But if it was in, say, Bermuda, uh, you're gonna, you, know, you can't go too early because it'll be too damn cold. 
So it, I think you got to look, wait to see because I think it, it depends how they call that from a strategic point of view for the ongoing organisation. Now they could all obviously buddy up with the Chinese, uh, which as far as we can tell is them, or their, their, their you know their team, uh, or they're you know organised by them. Uh, so that plays, and that's another sort of piece of the chessboard. So what are they doing? What are they doing with the Chinese? Is that a pseudo challenge that they're putting in? Not sure. Not sure. Other than we are told that, say, someone like Murray Jones is running it. Um, I think Morgan Larson's involved. Don't know any more than that at this stage. The protocol and arbitration and that we need ISAF to make a statement of what they what they intend you know to, to play out it's one of the it's one of the sort of things that's standing out there unknown at this point and one imagines there's there's maneuvering going on in the background that we don't know about um, I can't imagine they're doing nothing but at some point we'd like from our point of view we'd like to all the challenges we'd like to hear them say something publicly what do you think the major holes in the protocol still are? Well, we've got the com all the commercial stuff still got to come out yet, but I, I mean I'm focused on the the venue and the qualifying as kind of part of our whole strategy of survival in terms of putting sponsorship proposals together, and hopefully they're not too f you know hopefully they're not too far away. I don't think the venue's far away, but I need the qualifier as well. In the ideal world, would you have all the teams sailing in the one location, not in the, every other cup? Well, from a sponsorship point of view, depending on where the qualifier is, I don't no, I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, I know when it was it was talked about a couple of, or a year ago, whenever it was like, "Wow, I can't do that," but I, you know, to me, that's I mean, it's potentially a cost of relocation. You got to locate twice, but you know, I think it's actually quite good um, if it's a if it's a meaningful venue with commercial activity for an airline or selling watches or coffee or shoes. I know I'm all for it actually, and and better still if it was Auckland.